There are many, many ways to pull in XML data to be shown on a web page. In this lesson, we'll take a look at a client-side solution, one that uses the popular framework, jQuery. In this example, we're going to incorporate XML data to show four paintings in an online exhibition. You see the final file here on the screen. The data will include the file names of the images, as well as text content for the painting slides, artist, and cost. So let's look at the XML file that holds that data. This is the data.xml file from 0303. As you can see, the root element is paintings. That starts on line two. And there are four separate painting nodes. This makes up one painting node from line three to line eight. In each of those is the title of the painting, the artist, which is the same for all four nodes, the image file name, and the price. You may notice that the file name doesn't contain any path information. That's to keep the data flexible. Likewise, the price has no dollar sign. Again, flexibility is the key reason. Okay, let's go over to our HTML file, which is index.htm from the same folder, and start adding in our code. Now, before we dive into the JavaScript, let me show you the HTML. I'll scroll down to around line 40. Around line 40, I have a div with an ID of container. This div will eventually hold our paintings and accompanying details. Right now, all that's there is another div with a loading GIF image. Once our XML data is fully loaded, we'll hide it. Now, let's scroll up to the head section. I already have my call to the latest current version of jQuery in place, so let me build out my script right below that. I'll begin by adding a script tag and give it a type of text JavaScript. Next, let's add the document ready function so we can ensure that the rest of the page is fully loaded before we begin processing. So dollar sign parentheses, document, and after the parentheses, dot ready. Another set of parentheses, function, followed by its own set of parentheses. And then in between the two closing parentheses, put a set of curly braces and open it up. Now let's go ahead and put our closing semicolon at the end of that function. The first thing we're going to do is use one of the primary AJAX methods in jQuery to asynchronously load our XML file. This method will take a number of parameters. So dollar sign dot AJAX, parentheses, curly braces, and let's enter our first parameter, which is type. So type colon, and then in quotes, get, and traditionally we'll keep that as all uppercase. This is a series of parameters, so you need commas after each one. URL is the next one. And this is the name of our data file, which is called data.xml, comma. Now the data type with an uppercase T, also in quotes, XML, one last comma. And if the file loads successfully, success, we want to call the XML parser function, which we're just about to write. Let's put a closing semicolon after that curly brace and parentheses. And now we're ready to define the XML parser function that we just referenced. This code block will go below the document ready function. So I'll just create a little space there and let's scroll down the page a tad. All right, that should do it. The function's not terribly long, but it's key that you understand how this works. So let's enter the code one bit at a time. I'm gonna start with the basic function name, function XML parser and in parentheses, what we're passing to it, which is XML, and then an open and closing curly brace. And now in the middle of that, we'll start to put our code. Because this function would only have been called if the XML file was successfully loaded, we can get rid of our loading GIF. So let's just fade that out. So I'll enter dollar sign, parentheses, single quotes, and then pound load to target that div, dot fade out a lovely jQuery function. Follow that with parentheses and a semicolon. All right, now we come to the meat of the routine. We need to loop through the XML data and locate all the painting nodes. 
So we'll use a for each loop and the jQuery find function. So what are we looking in? We're looking in XML. So dollar sign, parentheses, XML within that. This is the XML that was passed to our XML parser function. Dot find, what are we looking for in parentheses? We're looking for the node painting. Make sure you don't put paintings. And then after the parentheses, dot each, parentheses, function, parentheses, and then after that set of parentheses, before the closing, put in a curly brace and give us a little space, finish it off with a semicolon, and that chunk's done. So what do we want to do when we find a painting node? We want to write out the code to display what we want. This is done by appending a combination of HTML and JavaScript to the container div. You'll remember the container div on line 40. Now, because we have to concatenate jQuery code with the HTML, it can get a bit complex, but we'll take it one element at a time. So let's start with dollar sign, parentheses, and the node that we're going to append to, which as I said was pound container. And then after that, dot append. And I'm gonna start this with a pair of single quotes and go within that. So now the first part is to create a div with a class of painting. Now you wanna make sure that you use double quotes within the single quotes that we're creating here. All the attributes should have double quotes. Okay, my div tag is now complete. Within that div, I want first to put in my image. So we'll start off an image tag, IMG, and give it the source attribute equals double quote. Now my code editor, when I type in one double quote, gives me a pair because normally that's what you need but I wanna delete the second one now because I'm gonna be closing this off before we get to the end. Now I want the path to where my images are, which is in a folder called images, and then a forward slash. Now that's all we need so far with the HTML. We're gonna concatenate a little JavaScript here. So I'll put in a plus sign. And as we're looping through each of the painting nodes, we'll use the this construct in parentheses, we'll look within that and we'll find the node image. And then once we find that, we'll get its text value. So what we're doing, and I'm gonna switch back to data XML for just one quick second, is we're looking for this image here and then we'll get this text value within that. And that's the basis for all the data that we're gonna be inserting. Okay, that's all we need from the JavaScript. So let's head back to our HTML by concatenating again. So add a plus sign, and then we need, again, a pair of single quotes, and all of our HTML will go within that. Now you'll recall that when last we left our HTML, we were in the middle of declaring our source tag. So we had an open double quotes here. So now I'm gonna close that off. Now again, Aptana has put in a pair of quotes, and I wanna get rid of that. It just makes it a little easier for me to think as I'm writing this, because I do have to put in other attributes. In fact, we'll put another one in now. Add a space after that double quote. Width equals a 200 value. Aptana loves to keep doing that to me. Let's declare our height as well. And the next attribute we'll bring in is the alt tag, and we'll set that equal to, and here I'll put in a single double quote, and again, we're gonna stop there and then bring in my JavaScript. Here I'll pick up the title and drop that in. Now I could type this all out again, but let's just copy all of that code, that is basically the JavaScript code. We'll paste it in, and we'll change image to title. Now that's all of the image tag, and all I need to do now is to close it off. So after the plus sign, we'll now concatenate another string, and that's in single quotes, starting with a double quote. And again, Aptana insists on putting in that double quote pair for me, but I only want one. And then we'll do a forward slash and closing bracket. Okay, that actually from here 
all the way to here is our simple image tag. Sometimes it's helpful if you put the code in with dummy values, just as you would normally, and then replace the data with your JavaScript code. If you find this a little confusing, that might be an alternative approach for you. Now we're still continuing our string with a little bit more HTML code. I'm going to put in a br tag for a line break, and then another div with a class of title. And again, the attributes are in double quotes. Close off my div tag. And now we're ready for our JavaScript again. This time we're going to use the exact same one that we wrote before, which is the one that finds the title information. And I'll copy that and paste that in. We're almost done. Hang in there. And now we're ready to put in another small bit of HTML. This is another line break, BR tag. This will be the price, but I'm not going to have any words before it. I'm just going to have a dollar sign. Okay, let's close off that string and we'll bring in our price. Now, again, I'm just going to copy my JavaScript so I don't have to rewrite all that. I think I copied the space there too. That yeah, looks pretty good. Now, I do want to make sure to change title to price. And now let's go back and concatenate in our final bit of HTML. And that's going to be closing off the various div tags here. There are two of them. And that's all done. And at the end, we'll put a glorious semicolon. Phew, that's a piece of work, isn't it? All right, the last line of code we need fades in the paintings. Because it's jQuery, we can do this sort of stuff. So I'll identify the class of painting and the jQuery function fade in. Give it a duration for the fade in of 1,000, semicolon at the end. All right, that's a done deal. I'll save the file, and let's go take a look in the browser. Okay, so here is that file prior to refreshing, and as you can see, I have my loading GIF cranking right away here because I haven't hit refresh to bring in my XML data. So I'll do that now, click refresh. And after a very brief pause, there's our four paintings, complete with titles and prices. Sweet. As I mentioned at the beginning of the lesson, this jQuery technique is just one of the many ways you can integrate XML data into your web pages. There are numerous others for other frameworks, as well as server-side processing language like PHP and .NET.